Hey guys, so we're gonna do a little experiment here. I was working on a PCB last night and I had an idea. I was thinking about the Glitch CRT, and the H2A and the A2H, and I was wondering if the fact that the a to H is converting an analog signal into a digital signal. That has to take time. So if I were to take an analog signal and put it into this, and then take the HDMI out, those are not going to be in sync anymore. And then I was thinking the same thing is true for the H2A. If I put a digital signal into that, and then take the analog out of it, it's going to be delayed. But then my brain connected the two and said, well, if I take an analog signal from the H2A and put it into the A2H, and then out the HDMI port, and then into the HDMI port here, I've created a loop, but the loop is delayed, which is basically the situation that you want to find yourself in when you're trying to do um, feedback, video feedback. Uh, normally you'd be like pointing a camera at a monitor while the output of the camera is feeding that monitor and you guys have all seen that. So I was wondering if I could do it with this. So let's patch this up and we're going to use the Glitch CRT as an intermediary to sort of balance uh, how much feedback there is and uh, glitch the feedback that's happening with the magical audio input component that we have on Glitch. So first things first, I need to hook up a display device. So I'm gonna plug the composite output of the Glitch CRT up to the uh, Trinitron CRT monitor. And you'll be able to see that here shortly. Then I'm gonna take the video output of the H2A and run that into composite input A. So now on the Trinitron we can see the output of the H2A live. But we don't have a signal going into it yet, so we need to get a signal there. <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, we're gonna need to get a signal in there. Now we're gonna take the video input of the A2H and this is a strange thing, but it, it'll work fine. I'm gonna actually plug this into the composite input C of the glitch, but because this is a mixing bus, technically that's kind of like connected to that. So that's almost like a Y splitter with potentiometer control. So now this signal should present itself on this cable and go to the video input of this A2H. Now to get a signal on our H2A, we're actually going to pull the HDMI out of A2H and plug it into <laughs> the H2A. And we'll see if that's, oh, there, ooh. <laughs> that's certainly feeding back. Oh my. Okay. So we've got some feedback going there. That looks pretty boring. It just it looks like it's leaning towards green with some little bit of weak signal interference causing some patterning there. Okay, so now what I have is an audio signal that's coming uh, from the music that's playing in the background. And uh, we're going to plug that into the audio input of the Glitch CRT to glitch this looping video. like adjust uh, some of the different parts of the audio like that's a really nice effect though because we're sitting in the recording studio we have four different audio sources uh, 
coming at this that we, we have on a little mixer that you can see in the background there. And she's just adjusting how much of each are being used to glitch the uh, audio input on the glitch CRT. Oh, that's wild. What is that? <laughs> oh, wow. It's spreading. What's yeah, I, I've never seen... I've never seen a glitch quite like that one. This is pretty legit cool. I, uh, I'm gonna have to do a lot more experimentation with this just to see what's possible. It's like a, it's like a visualizer, like an Winamp ABS or something, but it's so much more instantaneous like there's no it's like the audio is directly um, analog modulating the feedback loop so it's like it reacts to that music at the same speed that my ears are hearing the music so it's, it's, it feels different I think it's important to note here that we're not using any video source. Like, the video source is the loop. And what's looping into it is the video source. So, like, I'm not generating any of this on a computer or a VCR or anything or a camera. It's just the loop itself being manipulated a bit by the audio modulation. You literally don't need anything but these three modules to do this. It's crazy. It's just like it decides all of a sudden to just <laughs> lean towards a different color. It's wild. It's pleasant too. I'm sure we can make it unpleasant. Let's adjust glitch CRT so that we're a little bit less less in balance. There's obviously going to be a sweet spot where you get different types of effects. And runaway feedback and all that. Yeah, we got a no signal. As I dropped out how much I was feeding back in. Color bar is getting blasted into the stratosphere by that. I'm gonna turn up how much the audio is affecting the glitch. And like anything with glitch CRT, I mean, it is very easy to overdo it. Because <laughs> you are doing terrible terrible bad things to the signal. But if you can keep it in check, sometimes you can just find these whoa, some beautiful Sorry if I'm quiet, it's just... We're just staring. <laughs> it's... Like, we haven't seen this before either, so this is... This is something. It's like you built something and you got it in your store and you didn't even realize that it was cooler than you thought. So neat. I think this music's good for this too, because it's just chill. Careful not to lose my signal. You know what would be fun? I think we should hook up a third video source to the glitch just to see what happens when you take this weird feedback stuff and then add in an actual, like, real video signal to it as well. Sure. All right, let's let's set up and do that. We'll 
we'll add this, uh, I've got another H2A sitting here, so I guess I'll just um, hook up my laptop or something to this and we'll take a video signal out of that. second H2A and I've got the video output here and I haven't attached it yet so I don't really change anything about the glitch CRT dials there so all we really need to do is plug in this to composite input B and we should see the video start to affect things I just put on a uh, royalty free loop on YouTube so we're sort of streaming video off the internet into this and I'm not disliking that this is a dirty video mixer so you can see that the YouTube video is presently scrolling to the side if I bring it up as the main clock source you see that it's there. But I don't really want it as the main thing. I want it to affect the color, the background. Okay, so <laughs> you can tell that it its video is also leaking into the loop through the like CRT's mix boss. So you see like ghosts and shadows and trails off of anything that's moving uh, on the streaming video clip. And I can of course dial in how much of it's there. Glitch has his handy dandy dials. My loop is living on these two. I've got two adjustment points for how much feedback I'm getting. So let's find a balance point on that. Get it a little bit darker, moodier. the audio affects things. And the overall blend of how much the affected buses, the transistor bus is mixed in with the simple mult bus will of course have an effect on how the loop functions. And it it's hard to tell, you know, it's like getting all sorts of different looping directions and stuff depending on where I set this dial. CRT, so it's not like the CRT really cares, but if I go too low, we'll get bars because one of these two guys here won't have a what they consider to be a legitimate signal. But as soon as those bars go off, <laughs> they become part of the the looping color. So I'm sure you could set things up so that you were using the bars as your color source in the, uh, in the loop here. There's some pretty wild stuff going on here. I 
hope the camera is getting this because on the on the Trinitron it is it is beautiful. It's all these crazy flame shapes. I like it when it dissolves. It just sort of disappears as it. Honestly, don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick up on this, but wow. <laughs> I'm seeing a few little aspects of it that are like very digital, um, tearing and stuff like that from the upscalers and the downscalers, but for the most part, it looks. like analog feedback. Not seeing very many harsh digital edges like you get on some of the circuit bed stuff. beyond just the, the green. Oh yeah, sure. So if I bring the audio up a little bit, the, the bass notes are able to pull it down to the point where it almost resets the feedback loop down to black as that low frequency passes the color first. Can you turn down everything but the kick drum? That's... Yeah, keep channel 1 turned up there. Okay. Turn it all the way up. And turn the bass knob up on there. Three knobs up. Oh, it looks like it's already up. I don't think there's any drum on this part of the song, though. No. So oh. as, the, as soon as that drum comes back on the audio loop, you should get some disturbances. I'll give you a little bit of disturbance until the next part of the loop comes. drum is able to like completely if you turn down the high frequencies the very top EQ knob we should deal with some of that no one more up is that all the way down okay that keeps some of the hash out of it bring back in our video loop So 
always nice having a CRT to test these things on because I'm pretty sure Gosh, the video capture would not be happy with this. You can only really do this if you are driving a CRT directly. All right, well, anyway, I, I guess it's an experiment success. So that's, if you have the Glitch CRT H2A and A2H, you can create a feedback loop and add a little audio and it turns into quite the little music visualizer. I hope somebody out there finds that helpful or useful. Um, that's it for us for now. We'll see you guys later. Bye.